tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Yeah. Pump that theme oh, song pump up. Pump it up, pump it up. It's been gone for so long. It's for some that. reason, I hear this song and all I can think of is Torrance Grimms. <laughs> I don't know why. I just think the song just, I feel like it encompasses the character of Bash. Yeah. I don't know. I just, can, yeah, I, 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 do, I mean, do, I can see him like just riding a horseback, just like slashing Yeah, people I don't know. I don't know. Hi. Everybody. Just Royal Bros doing, doing their thing. Yeah, Royal Bros doing their thing. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> we are back here doing the after show for your favorite show, Rain. It has been way too many weeks it has since been. we've been it gone. Been. Well, but we have, since you've been gone. Since you've been Kelly Clarkson. No, I'm so sorry. Uh, but we are finally on episode 18. We are. The reversal of fortune. I think we only have four episodes left of the season, which is kind of heartbreaking. Yeah. And uh, we were left with a lot of cliffhangers last episode. So there were a lot of, lot of um, kind of questions answered and things kind of figured out and uh, some trickery from the producers. But then uh, I'm excited to say that, that King Francis is still alive. Yeah. Are you, we still I'm have stoked. both of Royal I'm very Bros. happy. I was going to be very disappointed if it, if we got whittled down to just a Royal Bro. Right. Well, that'd be, that'd be bad times. I am your host, Keaton Markey. I have my handsome, handsome co-host here. Thank you. I appreciate you, that. Where, what's your name? And JB where can we Zimmerman. follow you on social media? You guys can media. follow me at JB underscore Zimmerman. And you guys can follow me at uh, Keaton Markey. And make sure uh, when you tweet at us, keep the conversation going, uh, comment on YouTube, and uh, always hashtag ABTV Rain. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, I mean, this episode was so great. It took too long to get to it. Um, let's start off kind of a little little mild and then we'll work into kind of the the big things that happened yeah okay so, so i mean so do you want to start with, with sure my sure. favorite couple lathan greer who i love so much and claude needs to back up back up claude back up <laughs> they're finally happy stay away from Lath. right That's i mean I, I, feel about I, it. I i like them as a couple i mean i th i still would if I was out drinking with Lath, I would convince him to just break it off and go in a new direction, honestly. Who are you? But um, I support them. It's, I don't want Claude to be that that mistake. And that's exactly what it would be, a huge mistake. Yeah, it would be. And Claude is like, she's a, a feisty little minx, and she tries to weasel her way in there. But I think Lath is so in love with Greer. I he don't is, think uh, this is going to be an issue. For good reason. I mean, she, I like her as a character. She's, it's cool to see her, you know, kind of embrace this new role. Uh, she's a very ambitious businesswoman, which is kind of cool. It got a new role, one that we haven't seen sort of anyone, I guess, besides Mary kind of get into yeah she's taken on a very masculine role um i feel like since she's left the castle she used to kind of feel uh, she, she used to be very helpless and she always seemed to feel helpless and she always had to make the right decision for her family because of her father for certain reasons and she was always trying to you know walk on this very thin you know line and uh it is great to see that she's now you know she's she's grown so much she's taking control of her life and i love that line she said to uh Lath when he was trying to maybe convince her to to quit the uh the brothel gig and she says she you know she wants a man uh that she loves not that she has to depend on and that Lath is that man and she she you know she doesn't need him to get this annulment she that's that's not something that she really needs I, maybe it might be something that sh she would be happy with, but she doesn't need it, and she doesn't want Lath to, to mess up with 
you know, mess up how they have it now because she's very happy. That's why I'm on Team Bachelor Lathe. Because, no! Yeah, because she is a married woman. Like, she is committing adultery right now. Like, yes, her husband is in prison and, and you know, isn't getting out anytime soon or probably ever. More than likely, never. But still, she's married, like, in the eyes of the church, guess, yes, the church yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and everything that they believe in. It's That is a cardinal sin. This is, this, this is the thing. I just... I don't know. I'm just I'm just happy. Like, Laith and Greer are meant to be together. We saw that in, like, the first few episodes from season one with Nostradamus' uh, predictions. And, you know, with Laith had the, had the white mark on his face with the, from the flower when he was a kitchen boy. It's so, it's so crazy to go back there to when Laith was a, was a kitchen boy. He's come so far uh, as a man and as a character. And, and Greer has his, as well, but just kind of in a little bit a, a different direction. Um, sort of opposites. Sort sort of opposites. Well, they kind of have switched places. Yeah, and I'm just I'm just very happy. I don't know. I'm just I'm just happy to see them happy, and it's it's a nice, consistent thing for us right now when there's all this chaos going on, in uh, all these other relationships throughout the castle. So I love Greer and Lath. I want Claude to stay far away. Although I don't know that whole scene in the brothel where she like starts dancing on the table and they played this song which it wasn't a bad song it just seemed ir it just seemed misplaced within this super serious like life or death situation episode and then all of a sudden like i understand like <laughs> yes. yeah okay cool i appreciate like the light the light heartedness a little bit but it just seemed a little misplaced with claude doing right. the irish jig on the french table well yeah i think that's the whole scene entirely i think claude just came out of left field for no reason like why would she even be there like it was a part. Uh, it was just so strange to me that she would have done that. Also, because I thought Waith was looking like was sort of her personal guard, or, or kind of like a bodyguard slash nanny or manny. Waith <laughs> um, the manny. <laughs> you know, I think he should have seen that coming or or something. It, it just seemed so abrupt. You know, her kind of barging in like that, just, oh, Claude's here, like, at the party. That's weird. Well, and Lath is the type of person where I feel like he, like, when he has something in his mind that he wants, he puts kind of blinders on and he just goes for full force into that. And right now he wants that annulment for Greer so that he can have the white picket fence um, and, you know, happy marriage. And so I think, you know, that's, that is what will... Is, is going to get him in trouble, obviously, within the next four episodes between his relationship with Catherine and uh, Claude obviously does have her eye on him. And you know when you tell Claude no, she wants it even more. So we will see uh, kind of how, I have a prediction kind of how that's going to work out, but uh, we'll get to that in predictions. <laughs> yeah, a little foreshadowing. Well, yeah, I mean, just to finish up on Claude, I think... You know, she nor she annoys me a lot, like very often she does. But at least at the end, she did sort of redeem herself and and came to terms. She was humbled by sort of who she is in, in other people's eyes. So it's interesting to see that she actually does recognize how obnoxious she can be sometimes, <laughs> um, which was nice. We to love see. seeing character growth. We really do. Um, one of the characters that we haven't seen in a while that we did kind of see a ton of growth and change from uh, in this episode, only to see it her taken away from us, was Crazy Clarissa was Clarissa's back, everybody. back, and she explains it all. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Fania, Fania, Fania. I wish you were here to see Crazy Clarissa. Um, but Crazy Clarissa was normal. She was. Very, she, it was strange. She's calmed down quite a bit yeah. from her. I mean, I think... All of the realizations about who she really was and sort of what had happened with her past really, you know, made an impact. And, you know, I think it'd be surprising for her to have taken such a step back role after the, like, failed assassination again on her. Like, when they left her out in the cold, like, she was left for dead. Yeah, I'm that's, I, I'm very surprised it wasn't a, a retaliation right. after that if she was kind of just wandering around. But it sounds like, I mean, I'm I'm wondering if, if even now we're going to get any more of this story because Clarissa is dead. So, a spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I wonder if we're going to get more of that story because it does feel like they left this huge gap in her story where she just kind of went away for a while. But it's like, wait, you showed us that like that she had survived this. Like we all knew that she had survived this this so called death when everybody else thought she was dead. The audience knew she was alive, and we were waiting to kind of figure out what's her deal, what's been going on with her. You know, is she going to come back for revenge? And she she comes back in handcuffs, about to be hung. Bash saves her life, only to then kill her himself and poison her to save his brother Francis. And so it just seemed, it just, I wanted more. I, I really did. I wanted more Clarissa, and I just felt like we were, we were left, uh, it, you know, I felt like she, her life was literally, it was cut a little short, and her character was cut a little short um, by just killing her off in this episode. That is interesting because, you know, there's so many times in previous episodes where I'm like, this is it, this is Clarissa, her big comeback, like she's going to pounce from the shadows and stab someone. <laughs> um, but they they never brought her out. So for for them to wait this long, you know, we're in episode 18 of the second season, to just kind of do it all over and done in one episode is a little surprising. I think because there are so many storylines that they do stretch out over many, many episodes, as mm -hmm. we've seen, it's interesting that they kind of opened and closed the book so quickly. With her, with yeah. Her. When when they have stretched kind of this, it was it like Clarissa, Clarissa has been looming this entire season, I feel right. like. Like we've just been waiting for her. Obviously, Narcisse has been kind of the main villain. The supernatural stuff has been very much pushed off to the side, except those little bits that came up with the witch, who we saw a lot more of this episode. Um, but so, yeah, it, it was very strange just that Clarissa was in and out like that. Um, but, you know, Clarissa, you were great while you lasted, and I was glad that, you know, I was happy that she was, like, that she didn't go out a villain. Right. You know, I, I think that that, I, I'm, I'm proud that they gave her kind of that redemption slightly. Um, but now, Mr. Bash... Yeah, it, is he's kind got of a, a bad guy. Well, no, I'm a, I mean, I'm a I, bad guy. I'm still Team Laura Bros. No I, problem. And I, no you know, problem I love there. me some Bash. I, I, I love him. That song. Every time I hear it, I think of it, <laughs> <laughs> and it's on my iPod. So it's good to shuffle. No, it's just the workout it's, mix. It's, you know, sure. it's a great. You know, it gets you going. Like, hey y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel like you're gonna slow down. Hey, ah, uh, that you what? Go, I'm gonna go. Uh, but yeah, you know, at the, the end of last week's episode, or not last week, months episode. I don't know. Yes, has it been the like last four weeks? episode? The last episode, they surprised us, and we all thought Bash is dead. Bash is gonna die. But Bash begged for his life from the witch, and uh, she traded his life for another life. Yeah. Speaking of which, um, Kenan's got some competition. Um, I knew you I were going to go uh, there. I knew you were going to go there. Sorry, there's a, a there's... bug I had to kill in the studio. It's dead. I got it. That's not good. That's not a good sign. Why would you do that in the what? middle? We're talking about supernatural things. Wait, Wait it's you just like, go and kill like a bug Bash right in front of me. would say, you just got to take care of biz sometimes, people. Bash says just, that? Just it's gotta for take the greater care good. Of okay, okay. For the greater good of the After Buzz studio, he had to kill the bug well, right yeah, in front I was of me. And its could've, guts are right there. have bitten you. Sorry, we digress. Continue, please. Continue um, the witch. You the think witch. She's hot. I think, yeah, and I think Bash and and the witch. She saved his life. I think he owes her. Plus, I mean, as much as I liked Kenna, she really. You didn't like Cash. <laughs> <laughs> Benna. Um, Benna. I think Benna. Is... <laughs> I don't know. I I just was really taken aback by the fact that she so quickly like jump was gonna bail on on the wedding or not the wedding the their marriage and their whole relationship like he was legitimately trying to make it work by doing things he didn't want to do and she was like whoa whoa well, I, 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 I wasn't here for, for that after show and i completely you d disagree with you all right bash was distant he was not he, I'm not he, saying he was not trying husband. very hard for a long time and he should know, and he knows his wife and she tried really hard I, it, I i don't blame one or the other more i'm just saying you can't put this all on kenna Who <laughs> i'm are not putting you? i'm not putting it Who all on kenna you? i'm just saying that she took it too far i think bash overreacted a little bit i think he needs what are you talking to, about she was going to leave him 
No, she they was needed literally to have, going they to go with the situation. enemy. They she was to about, talk about to it. and bash like his blew up and like he wouldn't listen to anything. And he's just like, I, you know, I. Th- th- we're going back too far. Let's talk about this episode okay. today. Okay. The witch is hot. She saved Bash's life. She did. And then she also kind of is with Bash when he deals with killing his decision to kill Clarissa to help save Francis. I'm just saying, it's kind of a touching moment. <laughs> um, Murder. A touching moment. Well, no, I mean, they, <laughs> by that it's I mean, like, they, they killed her in a very humane way. It was, like, she didn't or didn't seem to experience any pain, which was commendable. I mean, he could have easily Maybe just whipped out his betrayal. sword and just, you know, cut her head off. But he did it in a painless way. You know, she was drinking wine, sort of that a luxury she's never really had before. At least not in a while without stealing it. I don't know. I she think- said, she was like, yeah, I've never, like, had, I haven't had anything but brown water. <laughs> I I really... I mean, I'm really happy Francis is alive. I still don't quite understand the superstitions and the magical stuff that happens in the the, ra- the world of rain. Um, and, you know, I, I, I can understand where Bash was coming from, you know, to save the king. But it still, it, it's still... It's going to wait. Who it's going to wait. Like, whose life is, is, is more important than another life? It well, just, I mean, the king's is absolutely well, more I, important. Well, I don't, I know. It's just, it's... It's I mean, just, it's, I think it's going to really weigh on Bash, or we're going to see, you know, Bash killed two people this episode. He had that one man hung who, he almost killed three people because he, cho- he chose to live when he, when he knew he was taking a life to save his. He had the other guy get hung right in front of him, and then he killed Clarissa. He killed three people this episode. What is happening to you, Bash? What is happening to you? You used to be the loyal, like, super awesome, always doing the right thing, good dude. You, you like, really valued human life. What hey, I'm just, happened to you, Bash? I'm just saying things happen. Someone's got to clean it up. And he's that guy. He's the go-to dude. We did get a shirtless Bash today. You look good, Torrance. He's been working out. Remember he said when he left the last season that he had to, he was doing a lot more shirtless scenes. So Nice. nice. Props, man. <laughs> yeah. He looked great. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else with the witch, with uh, Bash, with Clarissa that we want to talk about? Um, well, Bash, I mean, I just think that he, w- because of who he is as a person, will kind of carry this weight on sh- his shoulders. Yeah. Feeling bad about it. Um, however, he did get the validation that he needed or, or, you know, hopefully will help him through the fact that he was like, yeah, oh, wow, at the middle of the night. Knowing right when, when he, he killed, killed Clarissa, Clarissa that like that that was the turning point. So it's sort of, I mean, they may throw another curveball, you know, in a later episode. But I think it's pretty close to being like, okay, yep, that <laughs> cause and effect. Yeah, right there. I don't know. It, it'll definitely be interesting, and I, I, but I definitely agree with you that there is going to be a lot more of a relationship with this witch lady. And I think uh, Bash is really going to struggle with... He, he's going to have to deal with a lot of consequences for these decisions that he made. And I think they're going to haunt him for a for a while. Um, so let's talk about Catherine. Let's. Because she was a rock star, as always, this episode. Absolutely. Um, dealing... I mean, the emotional things that she went through, like, uh, like, like as the actress, like, to who plays Catherine, I mean... Dealing with the dying son, I love seeing her confront Mary and, like, literally right in the first scene, basically call Mary out uh, that we see them together. And Yeah, she really put her in her place. Oh, man. I was so happy about that. I mean, at the beginning of this episode, Mary was not a likable character. I was not a fan. God, no. No, it was like, who are you, Mary? Yeah, she, I mean, they did a really good job. I mean, props to the whole production team and the editing for making me as a viewer feel that way because you know how they set it up with her and Conde sort of having the affair and then just the way that acting she was acting as well yeah she was she, right. I mean ev- I thought everybody was so on point this episode with their acting and so and that that always makes it more enjoyable and the writers too I thought I thought the flow minus the jig of Claude at the brothel <laughs> I thought the the flow of this episode was really really good the pacing was awesome and the acting was just spot right. on too it was so interesting to feel like 
I wanted bad things for Mary, and I was like rooting for Catherine, which was such a 180 from the entire first season. <laughs> You know, to be on on the other end, like the other shore. I was like, "Whoa, this is weird." Well, I think Catherine. I mean, Catherine is right a lot of the time. I might not agree with you know her how she wants to react to what is going on, but majority of the time, her view of things are correct, and that's what I love about Catherine. And but and Catherine is always going to do what's best for herself and her family. Which, you know, you can commend her for that, or you can be like, oh, you're selfish, you know, whatever. But, yeah, as soon as she sees, you know, Mary, and they, you know, Mary gets back to the castle to, to talk about, to see if Fran what's going on with Francis, I mean, she calls her out for Condé. She, she calls her out for going to Scotland. She calls her out for being a crappy wife, and basically is like, it is your fault, Mary, that my son is dying. And, she, and, I, I, and I, it's so true, like, you know, uh, Nostradamus always said, like, that the prophecy that you would leave to my son's death, but I had no idea that it would be you breaking his heart. Right. That would, and it was just, ugh. But Mary deserved to hear that. I mean, I'm sorry. I know Mary's been through a lot. She really has. But I, uh, d this thing with Condé, I just... I've never been fully on board with it, and it just it, it and it really has broken my heart how she's treated Francis when he's tried so hard. I agree. I mean, I think she may have like had fun with Condé or whatever, but I still want. I don't want to see like a season three be like the Mary and Condé show. Yeah. You know, I I would much rather. I know it's a docu series and. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the Doctor real series. Francis you know, doesn't live as long as Mary does. No. But I would love them to continue their storyline for longer. Like, hopefully a season, maybe more. I don't think we're going to get another season, unfortunately. Oh, I mean, and it's so, ugh. I mean, the way that they, that you guys, they did this. No, let's finish Catherine and then we'll talk more about, okay. like, about the Francis Mary thing. But, you know, so the whole time, like, Catherine is like three steps ahead of Mary as she's kind of, you know, dealing with this role of now she's realizing, wait, I am king. She finds out that Scotland is in trouble, that there are Protestant rebels actually killing her um, her uh, uh, supporters in Scotland. She's She's losing her country. She's stuck in France. Her husband is basically on his deathbed. So she is the queen. She is she's not only the queen now, but she is also the king. And she is now struggling with does she take advantage of that situation by sending French troops to Scotland or not? And when basically Queen Catherine threatens her, if you send these French troops, like I will end you basically. Yeah. Uh, she, you know, she, Mary tries to think of the next best thing, and, uh, Condé suggests this private army that basically Narcisse controls, and, um, yeah, the, uh, Reynolds' army, General Reynolds, and, uh, Mary threatens Narcisse to, and sends for them, but, uh, what Mary doesn't know is Narcisse is working for Catherine. So Narcisse is working for everybody. God, I mean, I love this guy, but I'm so surprised he, he <laughs> survived this long with how he's, many times he's truly backstabbed Mary and Kath. I mean, yeah. uh, Mary and Francis. He's very political. He knows how to work people and get what he wants. And I think that he finds, you know, there's like with obviously, obviously with Catherine, there's a physical intimacy that they've explored. But I think there's also a mutual you know, beneficial relationship that they can have with each other. They're both... They're both ruthless. Right. And they're both seasoned vets at the game. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they're, they're good adversaries for each other, and so they work well as a team. I'm surprised that Catherine sort of um, ha has been able to use Narcisse to her advantage as much without any downsides yet. Yeah, Narcisse hasn't really stabbed Catherine yeah. in the back. He stabbed everybody else, which makes me question, you know, are these kind of feelings that Narcisse, you know, is is proclaiming to Catherine, are these real or are these just made up and, and fake so that he can control her? I still can't get a grasp on it. I want to say they're not real because usually dealing with Nar Narcisse, you know, he everything he does is for a reason and right. in his pursuit of power. 
Um, but I don't know. It seems like I don't know. It's he might really have feelings for Catherine. I yeah. I don't know if I'd go that far. I think he respects her a lot, and so maybe he has feelings in that way. I don't think he wants to you know marry her. I don't even know if that's possible given their social roles and and statures, but. You know, I think he definitely respects who she is and how smart she is. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets bored easily with people that aren't intellectually up to his wit. And so that's, I, you know, why he was so into Lola for such a long time. Yeah. He definitely likes the strong women that can, like, be on his level. Right. And I think that's why Claude is not somebody who he's yeah. super into. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's a good point. He, it's easy to dismiss her just because she's so far you know, unmatched with him. Like, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. um, they're just com playing completely different games. And, you know, speaking of this this private army, we did get a little bit of uh, Kenna uh, we did. in this episode when she went off looking for Bash to bring him back to the castle uh, for Francis so that he could spend time with Francis. And she ends up her another death there are so many just random deaths in this yeah place. he was just like oh, i was like death. why is this guy this guy just has a heart attack right. and falls over so ken is wandering the woods by herself and uh she runs into this private army and um as ken always does has a little flirtation with uh right. the general and uh the general is a good he's a, he's a pretty hot ginger He's a hot ginger, and uh, him and Kenna definitely have some chemistry. We, I, I always appreciate Kenna screen time, but <laughs> you and Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I feel like her character is really losing purpose. You know, it seemed like in this episode they kind of just looped her in just to mm -hmm. loop her in. Like you know, it was sort of the same old thing of of helpless Kenna just. Trying to, trying to do something, but then not being able to. You know, she did, I guess, find her way to a camp with horses, but, you know, she was not very discreet about stealing the horse, and she was just sort of like, ah, well, I guess, yeah, take I, it back. I, I do really <laughs> wish that we could see a new storyline with Kenna besides being, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, this is a tempter storyline, but it's always about the men and with Kenna. It's never about who Kenna is as an individual. And I I really want Kenna and Bash to work out. I really liked when they were when it was good with them. It was it was great and I thought they were a great match and a great balance for each other. And I want to see them work through that together. Um more so than I want to see Kenna flirting with other guys. Right. Um so you know, we didn't we didn't see much of Lola in this episode. We didn't, which is too bad. I I miss Lola. Well, Let's bring her back. Yeah, and I, and I was surprised we didn't see much of her reaction to I mean, we obviously saw it when she went to get Mary from her and Conde's little love lair uh at the beginning but and you yeah, know, and so we, in the like situation room. <laughs> what? A, yeah. But I mean, I mean, Lola, like, Francis is the father of Lola's child. Like, I would have felt like Lola would have been a little bit more, I, I don't know. I just wanted to see more of Lola and how she was dealing with this. But maybe maybe we will see kind of her tending to Francis now that Francis is really pushing Mary away right. completely uh, in this next episode, as, as we know is coming. I so, agree. I mean, I definitely wanted more Lola. I think that they handled it well just because I too much could be a bad thing mm -hmm. just because you know she is yes she is her is the i guess bastard prince's mother but you know i i don't want them to wear out that storyline too fast yeah. sort of it's just like we were talking about kenna you know she had more screen time and it definitely felt old and and sort of familiar Good point. Good and it was just point. like yeah. okay I'm, we're ready we're ready now, to kind of go to the next before, step with yeah. these people yeah no, I agree. I agree. Um, so should we should we get into? Uh, I mean, well, this is the other thing with the whole Narcisse storyline. I, it, I it's funny that we went from the beginning of this episode really not liking Mary. <laughs> like she was she was making stupid decisions. She was definitely in the wrong right. for the first half of this episode. But then when when King Mary arrived. She was badass. I mean, being like, I'm doing this for my country. I love that she's not backing down to Narcisse. You know what I did to your son? I'll do it to you, too. Um, you know, uh, 
I, I really love when Mary puts the pants on and is like, let's go. But I like it when she's doing it for the right reasons and, you know, the right decisions, not right. the silly. And also <laughs> that she's taking into account everything else. Like she, yeah. you know, obviously Catherine threatened her and you know, would have made good on those threats. Mm -hmm. But she found another way. She was creative and she sort of, you know, didn't. It wasn't a simple like, oh, well, let's make sure Catherine doesn't find out. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, strategic. And she actually thought about making a plan. Obviously, she had a little bit of help. Yeah. But, you know, she definitely realized that that way wouldn't work. And so she found another one. She or created another one. Do not test Mary's power when Francis is in, in on his deathbed. So I don't know, but that power is very quickly taken away. Right. Once Francis woke up. I know. Oh man, I was so, I'm such a Francis fan. He had a great I mean, he was sleeping for most I'm of so it. I'm so glad that he, he didn't die. Yeah, me too. You tricked us, CW and Rain producers and writers, making us all think this was this was the end for Toby. Right, and he came out smelling like roses. Like he literally woke up. He was like, "Yep, took taking the high road." Yeah, like the ultimate high road, and obviously made Mary feel not so good about how she's been acting. She um, she shouldn't feel good. She should not. She she's, should absolutely stew in the horrible decision making that yeah. she's been doing. She's well. She's been she's be, been being very very selfish, right. and that you are not allowed to be selfish as a queen. And I you know, and it, and it really sucks now that you know that what's happening with Scotland, and um, I'm glad that Francis you know by taking the high road road is sending French troops to help. Save Scotland, even though we know the country is... Uh, yeah. It was interesting because the whole first season was sort of about how their responsibility is so much bigger than their own needs. Mm -hmm. And for a while, Mary forgot that. Yeah. Or seemed to have. Um, you know, and it was interesting that Francis, who should be the one that's, like, most, like, power crazy as king, was very level-headed more re like in the more recent episodes mm -hmm. um so that was interesting that he kind of brought her back but i guess it's gone back and forth so at, at the end of the day they are uh, sort of a good match and, yeah and mary seemed to be very humbled by what francis said and did but francis also said that he will n never trust mary again right i mean that makes sense i if i were him yeah. i would feel the exact same way she def if she ever wants a any kind of relationship with him again, I think that she's got a lot of work to do. Oh, a lot, and I think oh, she yeah, needs I, to I, very quickly. You know, as we we saw her kind of try to say goodbye to Conde, but I mean, I, and this is the thing, I I don't think I've ever fully trusted Conde, and I think. He and, and I and I think his decision to pursue Mary is, was a dumb one on on his part too, um, but when we see you know Mary tell him that you know at one point she told him all she had to give him was her, was her heart, and um, Conde Conde knew that, but like he, he still like he effed up like he should have pursued Elizabeth. I don't know. I just and I know I know there are some people on Twitter. One girl in particular, and I need to look up your name because you deserve a shout out, and I have to look up her name. Can I look up her you name can. really quick? Um, I mean, I just, ugh. I I just think Conde, Conde made a stupid decision. I think he's realizing he shouldn't have gone with his heart. He should have gone with his head. And I think um, Mary's realizing the same decision because they are royals. They do not have that luxury to follow their heart. And, uh, you know. That's sometimes unfortunate, but I think they're both going to be uh, dealing with some crap because of it uh, in the in next episode. Right. I mean, that's why they've and they've been building this up. Mm -hmm. You know, I've really felt um, not on Mary's team at all recently. You know, I've not liked her very much um, by design. Obviously, she was sleeping around, so there's not that. okay, Mary. But. You know, it's it's also more about the fact that she is putting her own needs and, and desires above everything else. Mm -hmm. And 
it kind of culminated in the fact that she was about to take her husband's troops like away from the country that she married into and just to just to help her homeland yeah um i cannot find i cannot find the twitter name i do want to give a shout out to ray nasen though they always tweeted me they're yeah. awesome we love you guys we love everybody everybody ne- uh, next week, I I will unfortunately not be here, but I'm going to send you so all the sad. shout outs I need you to do for me because I promise shout outs and uh, you guys deserve them because you're awesome and we love you. Um, anything else in this episode that we need to talk about before we should go into predictions? Well, no, I think that segue is pretty well into predictions. Ah, let's do it. Let's get right into predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. I, we were talking a lot about Mary finally seeing reason at the end, or I was at least. Mm-hmm. I think, or I hope, that she continues on that path. I, I think that she got a big wake-up call from Catherine and huge one from Francis about what really she should be doing as a queen. I mean, she is in this role. Um, you know, she didn't make every decision to to be in that but that's the role she's in and she has to be a queen you should be the best queen that you can be in terms of of everything not mm-hmm. just your home country but you're the one that you are queen of currently yeah. so i think that she gets that now or it seems to at least and i hope that she um can keep that in mind to not go off with conde he has ambitions of his own. I think that it's it's it was a bad match anyway. We've talked about that before. You know, he was flirting with marrying Queen Elizabeth and just defecting to a whole different kingdom. So I don't think that they were right for each other, and I think it's it's time now that they stop. They need to be done, 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 done. Anything anything about Narcisse? Anything about um, Catherine? I'll go, and then you I don't know. Yeah, I think just same old, same old. Catherine and Narcisse. Maybe we'll see some Narcisse being the villain again. Mm -hmm. Um, Francis is obviously going to be more of an elevated position where Mary has to work to get his affection again. It's sort of been a back and forth this whole season. Mm -hmm. You know, he was in the doghouse, and she, like, it's, it's very interesting how they set it up so those characters can ping pong back and forth but it's interesting to watch for sure okay i got a lot I go got for a lot. it fire away okay conde's pride is gonna make him i because obviously in the previews for next week we see that he is still trying to convince mary to be with him right i think his pride when she turns him down again is gonna really really be hurt and he's gonna realize that he can't even go back to his home country yeah. well he got because pissed when yeah she left this real episode. pissed like and we he's punching a window Conde, calm down, Conde. Calm down. Just angry, um, I Conde. think angry, and, and that's that's scary when you see somebody freak out like that. Um, you know, he has every right to because he was promised something. He took a huge risk, but it's like, come on, guys, start thinking with your head. This head, not the other one. Um, exactly. it's, <laughs> it's only one at a time. <laughs> oh God. Uh, but I, I think he's going to this next time he gets rejected by Mary. I think he's going to realize how much that's cost co- that's cost him. And I think he's going to really, really turn on her. And it's and it's, it might be in the might be next season, but there's going to be a time where Mary's going to reach out to ask him for help again, and he's just going to be like, "F you." I think that's what we're going to get from Conde. Mark my words. Uh, I think Claude. She's going to tr- she because she feels like she can't have Lath. I think she's going to want him even more. So I think she's going to ask for him from Catherine. Oh, and I snap. think that's gonna put Lath in a really, really crappy position. So, uh, and I think that Claude also might be like, uh, Francis, don't give them an annulment because Lath is trying to date some brothel woman. That's what she's gonna like. She's gonna screw. She's she's gonna really mess with his relationship with Greer, which I'm angry at you, Claude. Stop it. Just stop. Um, I think Catherine is going to start to protect Narcisse. Um, Abe, when Mary tries to tries to do stuff, and I think Catherine's going to get in Francis's ear to keep Narcisse safe and get Narcisse closer to Francis, so that uh, Francis is is doing what Narcisse tells him. 
Um, and I think this is all part of Narcisse's plan right. to get closer to Catherine so that he can start controlling Francis more. Um, and I think this little private army that was supposed to go to Scotland is now going to come protect the, uh, the castle while these 2,000 French troops are in Scotland. And I think that uh, in doing so, we're going to see this general in and around court. So thus we have some kind of drama Ooh. as Bash comes back and is wanting to probably try to fix stuff with Kenna now that he's had a near-death experience. I'm dropping well, the mic. Fair enough. Well, I if, got if a lot of predictions. That was a lot. And <laughs> if that happens, I hope Bash goes right back to the witch lady, hot witch lady. Who is the hot? What's her name? She's very pretty. I, I, I like this witch lady. I like her without nice like all witch, like yeah. the doo. You know, I like her being like a normal, like almost like a Wiccan and right. like seeing her, you know, how she's like a medicine woman and she believes in these higher spirits, but that's not what she always relies on. Like there's, there's some medical stuff in what she does too. It would yeah, just remind me. more of a, like an apothecary, less like Yeah, it reminds me of Outlander. Yeah. So, and I love Outlander and you should watch my Outlander after show because that's another show I do. Nice. Yes. Uh, I, I think that's about it. Shall we wrap yeah. it up? Wow. It's been a long episode. Just us two. We've missed nice. you, Phil. We've missed you, Fania. Phil, Fania, come back. Come back. Hang out with us. Okay, JB, where can we find you? You guys can find me at JB underscore Zimmerman on Twitter and Instagram. Awesome. And you guys can find me uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Keaton Markey. I will not be here the next two weeks. I am so, so sad, but so, I will uh, be. Next two weeks. Next oh, two weeks I have. I, I, I have. We'll be out of town, and I'm very sad I have to miss uh, my rain after show, which is one of my favorites. So uh, I will be commenting though and watching. So thank you guys nice. for watching and keep the conversation going. Uh, and yeah, tweet at us. Yeah. Comment. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.